Hey everyone, welcome to the Flow Bikes Ranking Show. I am senior editor Ian Dilly here with our cycle cross rankings guru, Molly Herford. Molly, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Today we are chatting about our international women's rankings. And again, these rankings just can't stay stable. It's like you uh, knock them over <laughs> with dominoes week by week. Uh, let's start a little further down the list with the winner from the Tabor World Cup, Lucinda Brand. Here come the roadies back to the cyclocross season. Lucinda with a super impressive last lap attack at Tabor. <clears throat> Who else can we expect? coming onto the cyclocross scene from the road and, and perhaps uh, shaking up the international women's field more than it even is. I mean, we obviously always have our fingers crossed that Polly and Fran Prevost, PFP, uh, will make a return and, you know, maybe, you know, swoop in and steal another World Cup win, possibly a World Championship. You never really know with her. Um, and then, I mean, there there are always some, some roadies that start slipping in lower in the rankings throughout the season. Um, Pavla Hablakova just kind of came back a couple weeks ago, and she's sort of moving her way up. She finished in the top 10 this weekend in Tabor. So keep an eye out because, you know, you're starting to see these names that you're like, wait, who is that again? And then you realize, oh, right, they're here from the road and they're here to kind of tear it up. And yeah, let's talk about another roadie slash seven time world champion cycle cross racer, Marion Voss drops to number two from number one in this round of rankings. She took a, a break. Who takes, who takes a break? I mean, for a World Cup race? She broke my heart. I'm not going to lie here. We we talked her up last time. We said we're so excited. She's back. This is great. She's she's really found her love of cyclocross. She's in the mix. Um, she, you know, raced against Anne-Marie Worst in the Netherlands for their uh, Euro Championship. And, and, Anne, and, and Marianne is trying to ride it. So this is her move. Um, I just think that sand is so deep, you're not getting a huge gap by riding it. It's, she's really struggling to get through it. I think she's going to make it through. This is the first rider we've seen ride the whole Boom. sand section on the last lap. Worst beat her. Suddenly she's on a break. I don't know. I'm really hoping that she's back next weekend <laughs> and back in the mix. I really hope, you know, we've seen her have really great seasons and then just disappear. I really hope this is not the case. She did start out the season kind of guns a blazing, you know, came right off a really strong road season, actually skipped the world championships to go race in, in Waterloo and Iowa City. So can't blame her for, for taking a break. If you're doing two disciplines like that at a high level, you need to take some rest sometime. But that totally, you know, opened the door for number one and storming onto the scene was Anna Marie Worst. We saw her um, getting into a, a little bit of drama. Can you tell us about what we witnessed at uh, Tabor and, and Flandrian Cross? Yeah, absolutely. So when she crossed the line in Tabor, she went, er, Tabor, uh, she went right up to teammate uh, Arzufi and was just, you know, you saw some words. We're not really sure what those words are, um, but, you know, probably she was a little annoyed because Anne-Marie had an awesome lead in the race at one point and got chased down by her own teammate. Vorst is being closed down here by her teammate, Alice Maria Arrufi. <laughs> Which is, you know, not something you see very often in cyclocross. Uh, it's pretty actually different for the women to have team tactics going on. You see it a lot on the men's side with the huge Telenet Fidea team, but you don't really often get that many women that are up in the lead that can work together as a team. Uh, so to do the opposite of that and not work together as a team at all, um, you know, Worst could have had that win. She She's on form, she's going for it. And then the next day, uh, there's a good chance that she got a lead out from her teammate as a bit of a mea culpa kind of moment. <laughs> like, sorry about that. Here, I'll do what I can do. Uh, and I'm sure they're they're back to being uh, super tight teammates. You can't really stay that mad in cyclocross. <laughs> That's true. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see the you, you see the same people uh, every, every week, every weekend. So let's finish off by talking about the social media moment of the week. Sonic Hunt coming out with some uh, personality this year. Yeah, I'm super excited. You know, over the last few years, 
anyone that's kind of followed her on social media knows she's been very by the book, right? Like race picture, maybe a quote about the race, race picture, quote about the race, maybe a podium shot. But this week she actually posted a picture of her on the podium, two podium boys kissing both cheeks (laughs) and just mentioning this is like the highlight of her race for her. And for those who followed her, they know this is this is like a really new side of Sana, and I'm super excited to see a little bit more personality getting injected in her social media. So more of that, please. She is becoming the star we all know she uh, she is and, and can be. So exciting stuff. And we will see you again in two weeks for our international cross rankings. Thanks for being with us, Molly. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye, guys.